All righty. Well, thanks everybody for joining in on the Globe SMAP Soil Moisture Measurement Field Campaign webinar for April of 2016. Um, we have a lot of people chiming in, which is great. Literally chiming in on my end, I hear a, a chime every time somebody comes in, so that's awesome. So we have a, a great lineup of uh, people to discuss uh, information with you today regarding the campaign and the measurements. Uh, we're going to start off with uh, Dr. Erica Podes, SMAP scientist, and she's going to teach you a little bit about how um, her team at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory with the SMAP mission has been looking at some data that the students have collected via this campaign and compared it to the actual satellite data. It's not an easy task for their team to do. It takes, it's a matter of extracting the data from GLOBE and then extracting the specific satellite data from, as you can imagine, massive amounts, copious amounts of soil moisture data that comes from the satellite every day, every minute. So um, it's a pretty um, uh, monumental task at some, at some level. So, but it's really exciting to see and you'll be really, it'll really um, blow your mind the, the graph that, that they, they created um, with uh, just grabbing one of the school's data. Um, and Marina, stay tuned for this because Varysden plays a big role in this. Um, so uh, also we have two uh, teachers, one uh, Jeff Bauman from Shoemate Middle School in Michigan and Lynn Powers from Bozeman um, High School in Bozeman, Montana. And uh, they have, have been great uh, as part of this campaign. And um, they're going to teach you a lot of awesome stuff about how they've been taking measurements and what they've been doing with the measurements. Not just, you know, you know, with this whole campaign, what we want to do is we want to focus on not just the measurements. We want to focus on what you can do with the measurements, what the, under, under, what the measurements mean, and how you understand the measurements. It's easy to just take sample after sample after sample, but the measurements have to mean something. So basically, as you know, um, if you're on this part of this campaign, or even if you're on our El Nino campaign as well, one of our major goals is to take the next step in what does your data collection mean? How does the data collection at your local environment, how does, how, what does that mean with the global, on a global perspective? So how do you take that local measurement and see a global impact? And that's, um, what we like to do with this and uh, the teachers who are going to be talking today have show, are, are going to show you a little bit about, you know, what they've been doing in their local environments with these, with this protocol as part of the campaign. So once again, welcome everyone. And I'm going to pass it over to Erica. Uh, Erica, make sure you unmute yourself and she will talk to you about the, uh, the awesome data comparisons. Great, thank you very much for that wonderful introduction, Brian. Uh, what I wanted to do is show you a little example here of how we, uh, the SMAP team, is uh, using the data that you collect. So first of all, what's really important for us is for you guys to be able to collect many measurements through time, because what we're really looking for is um, to see how well your measurements or that variability in your measurements matches the satellite measurements. So let me go back a little bit and, let, and explain to you this whole process. So SMAP was launched a year ago and all of the SMAP data becomes freely available online. In fact, you can access it right now. Uh, but when we put the data online, we like to let the user know uh, the quality of the data, right? So. Uh, in order to know uh, how well we're doing with measuring soil moisture, we have professional partners around the world who measure soil moisture with uh, probes. They have in-situ measurements. And then we compare our measurements with their measurements. And if they match, then it gives us confidence that the satellite is doing a good job. So these uh, professional networks are, uh, I think we have on the order of 15 or 20 around the world. But the more measurements, on the ground measurements we can get, the better. And that's where GLOBE really can play a, a critical role. Because GLOBE is such a wide network, um, if we can get soil moisture measurements from schools around the world, it would greatly help us validate SMAP. So uh, what you see here is a graph. And this is from a school in Croatia, Varastin School. And they have been collecting soil moisture for, for a while now, since April. And what we did here was we uh, extracted the SMAP measurements um, and plotted it um, to compare uh, with GLOBE. So 
Uh, one thing that's really important is for you to collect the measurement on the day of the SMAP overpass. Um, if you collect it on a day when SMAP is not going overhead, it's still good information, but it's hard to compare because there might have been a rain event in between. And so um, it, uh, it might not be an accurate representation of what we measure, okay? So it's very important uh, that you collect on the day of overpass. And what we're seeing here is our measurements, globe measurements from um, around mid-April through about uh, late October. And early on, uh, we see that the match is not that great. So globe is the, the black line and, and SMAP is the red line. The match is not that great. And that was primarily because there was snow on the ground or the soil was frozen. And when those conditions exist, uh, we can't do such great retrievals. Um, there are large errors uh, with SMAP soil moisture measurements. So it's really important for you to not sample whenever the soil is frozen or whenever there's snow above uh, the soil. And just make a note of it, that helps us a lot. So early on, uh, that's why there's not a good match, but you see around um, late May, once the thaw began and that snow disappeared, then we have some really nice correlations. Now remember that the SMAP footprint, it's about 36 kilometers. So it sees a large area and this is just one point. So we don't expect to have a perfect match in the amount of soil moisture uh, just because there's so much variability within that pixel. But what we do expect to see is that um, that drying, so the trends, that's that's really what we're looking for. And that's what we're seeing here. We're, we're seeing great trends between GLOBE and SMAP. So this is very encouraging. And, um, and uh, we will uh, be making more of these comparisons as you collect more and more soil moisture measurements. Any questions? And I'll take a second to unmute yourself if you have any questions for Erica. Uh, I have a question, Erica. This is Tracy up in um, uh, Northern California. I was wondering if the, uh, the ground measurements, the globe measurements were relatively within the same time frame as when the satellite went over? Uh, relatively. It doesn't have to be exactly when the satellite goes over. Uh, we ask so the satellite goes overhead at about um, 6 a.m. in the morning. If you take the measurements at 9 or 10, uh, then that's fine. Uh, just make sure that you're consistent in uh, taking the measurements uh, at around the same time every time you sample. Okay, anybody else? Make sure to unmute yourself. I have a question from, uh, we're, we're about a kilometer from the coast um, and there's a large body of water or, you know, the Atlantic Ocean there. Uh, how will that footprint of uh, the SMAP compare with our data that's, you know, within a kilometer from the ocean? Right, so since uh, you're so close to the ocean, the SMAP uh, soil moisture measurement will have some bias and how much bias, uh, we'll have to see, but um, your measurement is still useful and that's the type of stuff that we can, uh, we can check is what, what are those biases? Yeah, I mean, what we, where we are, there's a, a small mountain range about 15, 20 kilometers away and they get a, a large amount of rain over there. We'll, we'll get very little or no rain um, periodically, and I'm just wondering how, you know, the resolution of SMAP, um, how that will fit in, or will that help you, you know, if more as a large scale than a small scale? Yeah, so when you have that much uh, variability in such a small area, mm -hmm. then, um, you know, all of that will be represented in the SMAP measurements, right? Because, okay. uh, so, uh, how well or, or how um, how representative your specific point is of the larger area, uh, that's to be seen, you know, so, so we can only see that when we start doing the comparisons. Okay, 
Uh, one last, how do we collect, can we get from, uh, through GLOBE, can we get the uh, SMAP data or how do we access it to compare with our own GLOBE data? So right now there is, uh, there, there's a data archive center called the NSIDC and they are archiving the data. And in fact, uh, there's a blog. So Brian, if you can um, point the gentleman to the blog and there's a link there to where you can access the data. Uh, but it might be a bit cumbersome uh, for you to download all of the data. And what we're currently developing is a tool where you can just go in, put in your lat long, and then uh, the tool will extract soil moisture for your specific lat long for a period of time that you define. And that we think um, will be much more attractive to a lot of people because you don't have to download the data and open it and go to a specific point to extract your value. Uh, okay, well that, I mean, it'd be interesting to learn how to do that as uh, an application in science. But um, obviously for like the younger kids, it'd be easier just to use that tool. All right, well, thank you. Right, absolutely. And what, you, uh, what also you could do, Richard, um, there's two other ways that you can look at the data um, side by side with the, the, the satellite data is, as you know, on the, the globe viz map, uh, at the top, there's a little bar, little button there that says um, add data layer. And you can add uh, the SMAP data layer. The SMAP will then overlay on the, uh, the background of the map. And then you, you can choose any specific day on the left side, left of data counts where you have to choose a specific day. And uh, then you can see if, if your school if your school happened to be over that look, if, if, if the SMAP satellite happened to be covering your school's location that day, you can uh, then check it out because there's a little legend there with color bars and everything on it. Um, so you can do kind of a kind of a, a match. It won't give you a specific number for the satellite data, but you can do a comparison. Color well. comparison, okay. Yeah, but then also we have, uh, uh, I mentioned, I believe it was in the last webinar and the one before, NASA Worldview. NASA Worldview is a visualization map, kind of like you see on the data layer map, but it's you can go in and, and put different uh, layers onto this map and then look at it for specific days or specific specific months since this map has been flying. Okay. And NASA Worldview, and then um, I will put those up a uh, um, little later on during the presentation. I'll put up a couple of those links uh, on in the uh, the chat area for that. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Sure. So I, I apologize. I can't stay for the entire um, uh, at telecon here. I need, I'm at a, a meeting. So if you have any other questions, please let me know. Otherwise, I'd really like to thank all of you for your interest and for participating and for all of the great measurements that you've done with such enthusiasm. And I encourage you to uh, keep collecting those measurements. They are very helpful. And as I said, the longer the time series, the, the more useful they are for us. All right, great. Any last minute questions for Erica before she has to go? All right, great. Well, thank you so much, Erica. And um, I know the schools are excited about the, the data comparisons. So thank you so much. All right. So let's, I'm going to do a little uh, data count here um, for the next couple minutes, and then we will get to the teacher presentations. So these are just simple maps from the Globe Viz system showing where the data for the SMAP soil moisture measurements have been, have been taking place. Um, this is March of 2016, and this is February 2015 through March of 2016. I know the, the campaign only began on the um, October 1st of 2015, but we had schools taking measurements um, basically the day after the satellite launched, and that was launched, as you know, on January 31st of 2015. So we actually had schools and uh, some in Croatia who were taking measurements the day after launch. So very exciting stuff. So a little bit about um, where we are right now. Since the launch of the SMAP satellite on January, oh, that should say 2015. I, I forgot to change that. Um, so it's just a little over one year, not two years. We have 1,785 SMAP measurements um, taken uh, in nine countries at 98 collection sites. And 
Um, if you've been with Globe for a while, you know whenever it's, uh, you talk about the pedosphere and the protocols involved with soil and the pedosphere, that um, 1,785 measurements is a huge number. Um, it's not like collecting the, uh, the cloud, pro, you know, cloud protocol or even precipitation where, where there's lots of um, uh, manual, uh, sorry, automatic systems out there that are automatically collecting the data and sending it to Globe uh, via weather station. This cannot be done via weather station. So obviously, you know, there's been, you know, over 1,785 um, digs into the soil or uh, measurements that weren't be able to be taken because of the soil state, whether it was frozen or flooded or, or there was a precipitation on the ground, uh, frozen precipitation. So that's very, very good stuff there. Um, it, we're excited about that, that we're closing in on 2,000 measurements. We didn't expect that so soon. Um, I know when you compare them to the other protocol measurements, like the automated ones, 2,000 doesn't seem like a lot, but when you're talking about, you know, Getting your hands dirty type of measurements, hitting 2,000 is a lot of measurements. Um, <laughs> we have a couple uh, new schools that have joined us recently. Uh, in Croatia, um, a school of Vela Luka, and in Thailand, and I'm going to butcher this name completely, but Princess Chulaporn Nakorn Srith Hamarat. I think I might have done pretty well on that. Um, a school from Thailand just joined. Uh, we, we're, we've been getting some great stuff from uh, the Thailand school. Um, also, I want to give a uh, shout out to our friends at SciStarter. SciStarter, as, as many of you are part of, uh, SciStarter um, and um, the Y Laces program through uh, Dixon Butler and Darlene Cavalier have really been instrumental in getting schools the necessary equipment to start and continue the measurements for the SMAP protocol. Um, they've, been, they've been great. There's, there's lots of schools collecting, and if you look here on the the left side here on this, this chart, you see there's a lot of schools that start with SciStarter. So um, you'll see a lot there, uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, stuff coming from around the, the United States from SciStarter um, in getting these measurements taken. So here we go. Here's the top three globe schools taking SMAP soil moisture measurements. And we're gonna start with uh, third place right now is, uh, with 109 measurements, is Bowling Green State University in Ohio in the United States. And there's a little star showing where it's located. And second place, now this, I should say, this is for the entire campaign. Second place with 186 measurements is Shoemate Middle School in Michigan. And that number is always going up um, um, due to our good friend, uh, Jeff Bowen, who you'll be talking to a little later on. And they are... Um, from Michigan, you see it right here. And then in first place right now is the, the, the three Osnobna Skola Varazit in Croatia with 240 measurements. So, and this is, these are just four students taking these measurements. So they've been really dedicated. And these aren't the only ones they do. They don't just do the SMAP soil moisture ones. So um, a teacher, Marina Barisic, is actually on our webinar right now. So uh, congratulations to everyone, uh, Bowling Green, Shoemate, and Varsden. And there's lots of uh, measurements coming in that you know, there might be a change or a change in these positions in the, uh, the near future within the next month. Because um, as you know, um, if you've been looking at the GLOBE website, uh, close to Earth Day, which is April 22nd, there is um, data uh, data measurement campaign where we're basically the uh, data measurement challenge. I, I don't know the exact verbiage of it, but it's um, something that Globus uh, really wants to have a lot of data measurements in a short amount of time. So um, get your measurements in. So very excited that, that we're getting all these measurements in and that these schools are representative across the world uh, for taking these measurements. <laughs> Oh, here, um, here, I, I forgot I had this on here. So Richard, uh, specifically, um, this is what the data map looks like uh, when you're looking at the, uh, the uh, VIS system on GLOBE. If you add the, the soil moisture measurements, uh, the, sorry, over here, you add the, the, uh, the SMAP layer, um, then you can add a base map of SMAP L3 soil moisture, and that's what'll pop up. This is showing you what it covered on this day. This happens to be March 25th of 2016. And that showed you the soil moisture measurements that SMAP covered on our planet on that day. 
So if you collect your soil moisture measurements that day, you can then you know go in, you know, look at your measurements and then compare them to um, the color-coded graph, color-coded legend right here. We had that changed. There was a one up that was up before. It was very confusing. So we had this this change. So so basically, what you're looking here is you're looking at these are basically can be converted into basically percents. So that's what we're looking at. All right, so right now we're gonna do some SMAP data collection reporting and we're gonna start with uh, Jeff Bauman from Shoemate Middle School in Michigan. So I will turn it over to Jeff and Jeff, make sure you're unmuted and I will stop sharing my screen so then you can share your screen. All right, can you hear me? Yep, hear you perfectly. All right. <laughs> Go state. All right. Can you hear me, everybody? Yep. All right. So um, when I was designing this um, last night, um, the the title had to be some serious SMAP talk because we talk a lot of SMAP here at Shoemate Middle School. The kids kind of came up with that one. It's kind of a fun play on words. We like that. So um, here we go. Um, this is me, in case you don't know me, uh, Jeff Bauman. I teach sixth and seventh grade science here at Shoemate Middle School in Gibraltar School District. Um, my first year, at, first year here at Shoemate, love it. Um, on the side, I'm also an adjunct professor at the University of Michigan Dearborn, and uh, I'm actually sitting next to a state fan right here. I have my boss, Mrs. Ferguson. She's on the call as well. Go state. Yeah, don't listen to her. I can't, I probably shouldn't say that, but don't listen to her. So um, that's me. Um, and if you want to get in touch with me, um, here's my contact information. My email is right here if you want to talk afterward. Um, if you're a fan of Facebook, check out Shoemate Science. Give it a like, you know, shameless promotion, whatever. We love our Facebook page, a lot of cool stuff. Check us out at Twitter, at Jeff Bauman. And uh, I post a lot of cool science stuff. So um, to get going with my uh, presentation here today, I'll uh, save some time at the end if you have questions. Um, but this is where we're at, Shoemate Middle School. Um, we have five globe sites right now. Uh, one for my first hour seventh graders, um, which is in this picture in the uh, upper left-hand corner here. Uh, we originally started alongside a sidewalk and we have a hundred some odd numbers later. It's been really kind of cool, all the data we've collected alongside a little sidewalk. Um, over here on the map, this little red dot, that's where Shoemate is. Whoop. Sorry, guys. Uh, this is where Shoemate is um, in Michigan. We're between Monroe and Detroit. And uh, over to the right there, you'll notice we have Lake Erie just on the other side. Um, according to my wife and uh, a lot of people that live around here, Shoemate is actually, actually Gibraltar is in one of our uh, high flood zones in, in Michigan. I know insurance is kind of pricey because of the potential for flooding. And so, you know, being this close to Gibraltar now, it's kind of cool to take this data and, you know, potentially share it out later on down the road, um, especially since we're right by high flood. And a uh, picture of our buildings right here on the bottom. So that's where I'm at. Um, my SMAP mission, really simple. I started about a year ago with my good friend David Bedlowski and Andy Henry from Wayne Risa. Um, at the time, I was looking for something new, something hip, something cool to do with science. Um, I've been raising salmon in my classroom for a few years and I wanted the next big thing, if you will, and those guys introduced me to SMAP. And I started off small scale last year at Weiss Elementary as a fifth grade teacher. We had three sites and we would take data samples a couple days a week. And, you know, I, I always had the drive. I wanted to make it bigger and bigger. Um, when I got here at Shoemate, the given the blessing from my awesome principal right next to me, she said, sure, dig as many holes as you want, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so that's where we, we took off. And with my seventh graders, they were kind of my guinea pigs. We, we started with the, the sidewalk site, if you will. And um, after that, our curriculum got changed. We moved weather into the sixth grade. And so um, we launched four more sites with my uh, four hours of sixth grade science. And so now we have a total of five because I'm not going to take a site away from my seventh graders that started it all off anyway. So we have kids taking data all day long, first hour, second hour, third hour, fifth hour, and sixth hour. Um, 
my teaching partner, uh, Mr. John Kay, he's all on board with me. He loves it. Um, we teach the same thing. Uh, we kind of team teach, so our kids are always on the same page. Um, we send kids from my room, his room, out every day to take measurements. And I know earlier um, we mentioned only take measurements when the, the satellite flies over. But this is great science, man. We take measurements every single day. So, um, and like I said here, it's, it's always a great thing to have the, the boss's blessing when you do this. Uh, the janitors and the, the lawn maintenance guys, they don't like us so much because we have all these pink flags out and holes in the ground, but whatever. So, <laughs> anywho. Um, next up, my, my thoughts about SMAP is if you're going to do it, do it big scale, you know, do it right. And, and so I use the, the phrase data smash. That was kind of something I, I thought up at the beginning of the year. So if we're going to take soil moisture, why don't we do um, soil temperatures and, and the current temps? Because you can log that um, under the, the same bookmark on GLOBE. Why not do surface temp and clouds while we're at it? Um, I'm a huge fan of Kokoraz. I have my own weather station at home. I put up uh, three here at Shoemate. And, and so if you're doing all this, why not, you know, measure precipitation as well? That way um, you can see how it all works together like a system. And if you're measuring that, you know, why don't you measure the, the pH of, of the rain while you're at it? And so we, we kind of called it the data smash, taking everything that we could measure and, and just put it together to see what would happen. And it, it's, it's worked really, really well. Um, the way we do it, the kids work in small groups. Like I said, we send two two to four students out at a time. Um, they, they get trained by Mr. K and myself. They take the measurements, they bring it back inside, they, they measure everything up, they put it right in the computer. It's the train the trainer method. And it, it, it's worked really fairly well so far. Um, one thing we've noticed is we have to have a supervisor per hour. So that kid that you know is just flying with science, we, we tend to send that kid out and that kid is our, our supervisor, if you will. They make sure that the data is entered correctly and um, everything goes you know, according to plan. So we have a supervisor. And you know the big thing that I was worried about when, when we started doing this is the amount of time it was gonna take to do SMAP. SMAP doesn't need to take a long time. You know, You send the kids out, they collect the data they bring it back and you can discuss when the, the moment's right, whether it's that day because you had massive rain or, you know, everything's soggy outside and the kids want to talk about it. The, the data should drive the learning and the questions. And, and it's, it's not something that you plan for. It, it's just one of those ahas and, and you, you kind of go with it at the moment. So it's, it's really a cool thing. Um, but these three ladies, uh, obviously, they, they love taking the measurements. They're really good at it. And, you know, junior high, you can't take a picture without doing that. So uh, next up, a couple pictures of our, uh, our launch day when we launched the, the four stations. Um, the kids were into it, man. They, they loved every minute of it. They thought it was super cool. And, you know, if you tell kids that they're going to work with NASA and work with satellites, it just blows their mind. And, then they go home and they start talking about it with their parents and it's, it's a really good thing. And I know I don't need to sell SMAP today, but it's, it's done a lot of good things here and it started a lot of, you know, good conversations and within our district. And it, I think it's a pretty cool and a big thing, obviously. So um, right here, we uh, have Mr. K, he's lasering the soil sample on the left in the middle. This is our first sample we took over by the pond. Um, we were measuring it up and then naturally you just got to do a selfie because it's, you know, lots of fun, right? So moving on. Uh, one of the coolest things I like about it is the, the recognition that you get. So every time you enter that sample, you know, your name for your school is seen internationally scrolling across the banner. And if that's not cool, I don't know what is. So to have our school represented with all of these awesome schools, you know, big shout out to our friends in Croatia, man. Hat off to you. That's awesome. To, to have our school up there with you, that, that's, that's an honor. That's really, really cool. So I, I like that you do this. Um, moving on, in between the two science rooms, we have what we call the data room. And we have everything organized and, and set up for our students to make SMAP easier. And so um, we have a table that has our drying oven on it. And um, with that oven, one thing that you got to be careful with is, is the hands and, and taking the can out. So we went to Home Depot and we got these uh, thick gloves 
and yeah, we, we marked it up. They say SMAP on them. That's, that's like, you know, a pretty official right there, the SMAP gloves of science. So we have our gloves, our scale. Um, we have a uh, plastic bin that we put all of our containers in that way they're ready to go. Um, that sits off to the side and all of our data sheets sit there and it's, it's all readily available for our students so they can go in and, and get it. You have to have everything organized. That's, that's key, especially here in middle school. So um, one thing that's not in the picture is we have a five gallon bucket that um, you put the stuff in. So when you're traveling, you grab the bucket, you take it outside, take your measurements, put it back in the bucket and on you go. Um, next up, the, the oven. One of the things we found out about the oven is that you have to, you have to mark the cans when you have a lot of samples drying. So um, the kids will take a dry erase marker, they mark the can, and then they have a designated spot that it goes in the oven. So sample number one, since uh, that's seventh grade, they kind of stake their claim first. They get the bottom shelf. That's a big deal for seventh grade. They get that bottom shelf. Um, second and third hour, fifth and sixth, they sit on the top two shelves. Um, it, it's, it's an organization thing, you know, you want kids to know where their sample is, they, they grab the sample and, you know, then they go to measuring. So, um, another thing too, we like to clean the cans every week, every couple of weeks. Um, and then the dry erase marker, if it doesn't come off, we use the uh, clear hand sanitizer and it helps take that off as well. Um, we got a little creative and we found a way to organize our tools. So we have um, kind of an old door and we had an old piece of pegboard. So we, we took that pegboard and we fit the door with it and we put the hooks on the pegboard to hang all the tools for the kids. And um, you can see in the picture here, all of our tools are hanging on the back of that door next to the oven, that way everything's ready to go. Um, one of the things not pictured in this is uh, the, the cheap clear ponchos. You want those in case it rains because kids don't want to stop taking measurements because, you know, it's raining. They want to take the measurements because it's raining. They want to see what's going on in the ground, you know. So everything is hung up nice and neat. Um, it's a responsibility thing for the kids to hang their, their materials up, put it away when it's done. It's, it's science, you know, it's cleaning up after yourself. So um, that's something that's really cool that we, we set up, works real nice. And then next to that, in that same room, we have an older computer, but all of our um, measurement sites are, are bookmarked, and, and we have a ton of them there, um, as you can see at the top. And so basically, they're, they're ready to go, so when the kids want to enter their measurements, they click on the bookmarks. Um, the, the sites will say uh, first hour, sidewalk, soil moisture, or whatever. And so it's, it's organized really nice by hour, that way they can just click on it and there's no confusion and the, the data doesn't go in the wrong spot, if you will. So um, the login information for my student account is on a piece of paper right off to the side there, that way if I'm not here, they know how to log in. It's, it's you know, really simple. And they're doing a good job, you know, entering the data as well, so. And then a thing that's worked really huge, I call it the data board. And so after we take numbers, it's, it's not just entering that number into the computer to make it disappear. That number goes to the data board. And so I took some uh, painter's tape um, from Home Depot and I marked up my board like that. And the kids take their numbers and they put it on the board. And so when the numbers come out, they're being reported. That's what drives the question. Some kid in the back will say, are you kidding me? We have 98.3 grams of moisture yesterday we only had 66 point you know whatever and and so well why did it go up why do you think that's the thing that drives the question you know it's it's based on what the world you know mother nature is doing it, it works really well and so um, on our board we have clouds rain ph precipitation um, you'll notice that it says coco raza in there that's kind of where our rain data gets logged um, I'd like to get um, more involved with the, the globe version of it, and I hope to do that soon here, but we have to report out first thing in the morning, and so it, it goes through Cocoraz right now. Um, but the data board, that, like I said, that's what leads to the, the good conversation. It works really well. Um, another thing, too, um, in terms of data, we, like I said, we have three rain gauge stations here at, at Shoemate, and so um, we, we compare the three of them. They're only separated by a couple hundred yards in three different courtyards. Um, and we've never, you know, got the same number. And, you know, we've never yielded the same number in all three rain stations. And so that right there is something we talk about. We compare it to the soil moisture outside. It's, it's a nice added piece. It's part of that hashtag data smash that I brought up earlier. Um, and so 
not to take too much more you know, of our time, that's really in a nutshell kind of how we do it here. Um, my future idea is I'd like to look closer at the rain that we collect, the precipitation, and, and what it's doing to SMAP. I think that's my goal for next year. So the rain in the can versus the rain coming, you know, whatever in the ground. And another thing too that I've brought up a couple times is I'd like to see that solar noon thing get lifted um, on the globe site because I'd like to start logging our rain data um, on globe. It's just, we, we can't do that based on, you know, the timing and, you know, National Weather Service wants it logged by like, you know, nine o'clock in the morning, solar noon is too far off for, for us here in Michigan. So I, I'd like to see that change. But, you know, other than that, I'd say Globe and SMAP has been a really big thing. Our seventh graders loved it. They hit the ground running and our sixth graders saw what they were doing. They wanted to do it. They started doing it. And now, is it my turn? Is it my turn to go outside? You know, they're just dying to go and do it. And to be honest with you, like I said at the beginning, it was the next cool thing I was looking for. I didn't envision this thing blowing up into like really, really cool science. And um, it's, it's, a, it's been a big thing. So um, any questions for me? This is uh, one of our data measures from back in October. And it, if Brian, if that doesn't encourage kids to, you know, want to do this more, I don't, I don't know what does, you know, it's, it's really cool seeing all that data. So I'm ready for questions if anybody has them. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jeff. That's spectacular. Just the, the, the organization and, you know, I know I'm echoing the statements in the, in the chat about, you know, the importance of um, how you're getting the students to do these. You're teaching them lots about responsibility and, you know, the scientific method is just, you know, obviously evident what you do, but, but, you know, you've gone beyond, uh, you know, expectations for sure. And that's, that's, that's awesome stuff. So um, anybody have questions for Jeff and remember to unmute yourself. I knocked their socks off. I mean, I, I silenced them. Did you hear that? <laughs> hey, Jeff, this is uh, Tracy out in California. I got a question for you. Um, did you guys get a chance to work with your kids on any science fair projects that's comparing this map data with, with your uh, uh, globe data? Uh, not yet. We're, we're trying to get that going here. You know, getting the the whole thing launched and organized this year has been the mission. Um, just cranking it up a notch, you know, for the rest of the year and next year, that, that's kind of the goal. But I, I do hope to do a, an actual comparison to see how close we are. Great. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? All right, like I said, uh, Shoemate Science, it's on Facebook. Like it up. I think it's pretty good. I'm not going to lie. I, 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 I think it's really good. You think it's good, Mrs. Ferguson? Super good. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Mrs. Ferguson. Hi, Jeff does a great job, and thank you so much for letting us be a part of this. Oh, yeah, definitely, for sure. All righty. All right. Well, thank you, Jeff. I guess my, my last thing is – I, I also raised fish, and here are a couple pictures of uh, our salmon, our lake sturgeon that we do here too, and that's in our classroom. I mean, we we get science done here at Shoemate, and you know, between SMAP, Globe, and the stuff that we're doing, we're doing really good things here in the Gibraltar School District. So it's it's really cool to be a part of that. And like I said, I, I thank my boss for allowing me to do this here and just go nuts with it. That's the greatest thing. So thank you, everybody, and uh, I appreciate it. I hit stop share, right? Yep, hit stop share. All right. All righty. Thank you, Jeff, again. So I will pass it now over to Lynn in Montana. And make sure you unmute yourself and you can share your screen. Okay. Um, our bell is going to ring shortly. Okay. So if it gets real loud in here, cover your ears. <laughs> How's that? Perfect. Can you guys hear me? Yes, perfect. Um, I'm Lynn Powers. I'm here in Bozeman, Montana. And um, here's some information on what Bozeman's like. As you can see, we're in the Gallatin Valley. We are surrounded by 
all these mountains. And so with the SMAP, with the one pixel being 36 miles, um, it's a little bit different for us here. Uh, I was trained by SciStarter, hoping to get it all taken care of before the winter hit. But unfortunately, by the time finally got trained and got everything, since I'm new this year, um, our ground had frozen. So even though Montana is one of the largest of the states in the US, our population is one of the lowest. Um, Bozeman is growing. We are home to the University of Montana. And most of you probably have heard of Yellowstone National Park. And that's um, our next door neighbor. Here at the Bozeman High School, we're pretty large. We're the only one in this in town. Um, we have close to 2,000 students. I am part of the Bridger Charter Academy, and we have 71 students within our academy. Um, Bozeman's over 4,000 feet, and there's our latitude, longitude. And yes, that is a bear. We did have a bear in the school. That's from this fall. That made international news. So here's Google, and here we can see this is the area where we are taking our measurements. Um, this is our wing for the academy. And the school goes all the way down here is the main office. So our campus is pretty large, but as you can see that there's room for more places for us to go out and take more samples. Our next site, I'm hoping to do that one right there. But here's a closer view of where we're collecting. And as you can see, there is some dirt that has been disturbed. Um, the school district went in there about two weeks ago with a bulldozer and moved some stuff around, which we're not too happy about, but we'll make do. And here's a better site that we'd like to work on and get some more GLOBE protocols going. Um, learn some more and start taking more data and use the creek that goes right in front of our, these are our windows for, for our department. So we're learning, yes, right after we got trained, um, it started snowing. We did try taking a sample and the ground was already frozen, so we didn't get very far with that. Um, we did have snow last night. So we are trying to get set up. We're not as organized as Jeff is, but he is a great inspiration. Um, again, we're doing the train the trainer type of thing. And we gotta watch out for rocks because they dent their cans too. Luckily, we have quite a few of these cans. So I have about four students that I'm working on that I'm training them how to do. We have um, four classes that we will be expanding with the protocols um, as soon as we get a few under our belts. We do have some 80, 90 different data collections that are on the SMAP site. However, they're all because there was snow on the ground. So we've taken a couple collections and we're working on those. So they're lear learning how to go in and, and do the protocols. Making sure they're filling out their sheets, doing all their measurements. Um, they're learning this not by us showing them how to do it, but by reading all the protocols and working through it together. And so they're learning a lot that way on how to communicate and I really enjoy that. And they're learning how to um, be better with their, their logging, which is important. Um, we were surprised at how fine our dirt is. You do see kind of clumps there, but if you touch it, it, it goes into dust. It is just really, really fine. And we were surprised about finding that out.
So we had snow last night, like I said, we've got snow in the forecast today. So unfortunately we run into issues with the weather, but isn't that what we're out here trying to um, <laughs> gather data for? So I am going to stop sharing. And does anybody have any questions? Make sure you unmute yourself before you ask any questions uh, for Lynn. So we're enjoying ourselves. We're having a lot of fun with what we're doing. The kids are learning a lot. And so I'm looking forward to learning more protocols um, start working with the um, El Nino and adding more protocols and getting the students to take more data. All right, any questions? Thanks, I appreciate that. Great, well, thank you, Lynn. Uh, for the great report out. Um, you mentioned that you had snow last night. Um, we actually, in Maryland here on the Eastern shore, we got about an inch of snow last night as well. And it was, um, um, when I got home last night, it was 72 degrees and that was at 9.30 PM. And by the time we woke up at 5.30, there was an inch of snow on the ground and it was uh, 28 degrees. So that's, that's a huge, temperature drop overnight. So, and now it's, uh, I think a high today of in the thirties or forties. So mm -hmm. snow is melting a little bit now. Most of it out my office window here at NASA Wallops, most of the snow is gone, but it was, every, all the grass was covered when I came in this morning. So, yeah. But yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, hopefully uh, the w weather will warm up a little bit so you can, you know, get some, some great measurements. Um, but yeah, but it's, it's so vital. Um, Lynn mentioned that, you know, that they have lots of samples that, that, that they submitted the data for, but that the ground was frozen. And that's very important to know, because as you know, the SMAP mission has what's called a freeze thaw product. So it's actually looking at the freezing and thawing of, of the, um, the soil you know, seasonally. So it's actually looking at that. And Erica, um, who you heard from earlier, does a lot of research on that. Um, primarily when, the, as you know, the, the original satellite uh, sorry, the original instruments on the satellite, the, the active radar and the passive radiometer, the active radar part was the one that was really being able to measure the freeze thaw specifically. Um, the radar, uh, the radiometer doesn't do that. So the radar um, is actually what's missing now because that's the part that, that, that um, is non-functional. But they're working to uh, work with a mission, a uh, European mission called, satellite mission called Sentinel, which actually has a radar on board. Um, it's a different band radar, but what it does is the Sentinel satellite um, flies um, just behind the SMAP satellite. So we might be able to kind of piggyback off that radar uh, imagery in order to get back the, the, uh, the radar data uh, for the SMAP mission, the radar soil moisture data, which, which then would be, um, you know, finer resolution data as opposed to what's now about the 36 kilometer resolution uh, with just the radiometer. All right, so let me move on here. I'm going to, um, should be, oh, took me back to the first one. So I'm gonna keep going here. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Mm -hmm. You probably see just that presenter view, don't you? So I will swap that. All right, so, sorry about that. So. Um, last couple things here. Um, what we're looking for are guest bloggers still, and this wouldn't require a lot of your time. Hopefully, this would just be a matter of, you know, putting something together with um, some pictures, maybe something from, you know, even your presentation today. I know uh, some of you have done this already before. Um, Vicki Gorman did this um, before. Um, uh, this goes for SMAP and the El Nino campaign here. It mentions El Nino campaign, but um, we're looking for guest bloggers for the SMAP and 
uh, El Nino campaigns. And basically, it's a paragraph or two with uh, with some uh, pictures. Make sure the pictures are you know approved. If there's any, you know that the students have permission that you have permission to uh, share the uh, the students' images online on the Globe website. That's the only place it's going to go on the Globe website. Um, but um, a little bit about your data collection or any things that you've learned. You know whether like Jeff could could do something. You know I'm along. I'm not giving any work, Jeff. I'm just saying along the lines of. Um, um, you know how you've how you've been able to to fine tune this data collection process in your classroom. Um, that's always things that we're learning about um, with NASA and Globe. You know we're always open to to new and improved ways of doing things. So you know personally, I don't take anything personally. So if you'd like to see something that doesn't work well, anybody, let me know. You know or something you're confused about. You know let me know. My email is always there, Brian.a.campbell@nasa.gov. So, but if you want to be a guest blogger in either the SMAP and or the El Nino campaigns, please let me know, and uh, we'll get it. We'll get it set up. And here's an example of uh, this is just a short blog from uh, Alfred State College um, from milking cows to taking soil moisture samples. So it's just a you know a little bit about how they're collecting samples and just one image. That's just a simple blog. And as you know, I always uh, put a little uh, um, ping out for this. Um, El Nino campaign has begun. It began on March 1st, and you know it's a pretty uh, arduous campaign, meaning that there's six protocols involved, um, which one being SMAP. Um, so basically, it's 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 you're you're a participant in this um, if you're taking at least two of the six protocols. And what we're going to require in the near term, so that we can um, get a focus on your measurements, is that you register as a member of the campaign. And you can just go down to the, the link at the bottom here. Um, it's kind of a long link, but if you, you can kind of copy that one. And, and this will be in the webinar recording um, later on. Um, you can go to this and then you'll see in the bottom is member. You have to be logged into the GLOBE website, go down to member, and then you can join as a member. So therefore, you know, we have, we have almost 40 uh, members of the campaign right now across the world. So please join that so we can you know, keep track of where everybody is and, and, and so we can uh, then track, you know, how much data you're, you're taking so we can give you accolades for all that and uh, so we can uh, follow you and, and find out what's going on. All righty. So any other questions before we end this webinar? Just want to say thank you to everyone uh, for coming in and participating, especially to uh, Jeff and Lynn for their presentations. And you can really see just how awesome uh, the data collection is going in their, you know, in their classrooms. And, and you know, um, and I can't stress it enough, the importance of not just taking the data, but actually trying to understand and discussing what the data means. It's so, you know, it's easy to just take the measurements. Uh, I saw in there that Vicki mentioned um, that, you know, their SMAP measurement, actually taking the measurements takes about seven minutes. So that leaves a lot of time for discussion. So, um, that's that's excellent stuff. So, any questions? Um, I should say that our next uh, webinar will be in May. I don't have the specific date yet, but it'll be in the probably the first uh, first or second week of May. Not sure yet, but uh, you will see those email that email come out. I'm sure you get a lot of emails from me. So, sorry about that in advance, but you know I try to keep everybody up to date on what's going on. All right. So, anybody have any questions or comments? Any shout outs? Shout out to you, man. Thank you for putting all this together and, uh, you know, organizing it. I appreciate it. My kids love it. Yep, for sure. And we, we love your kids. We love all the teachers who are, uh, who are participating in this. Awesome stuff. All right. Anything else before we adjourn? Stay warm. <laughs> yeah. Everybody stay warm or, or Richard down in Puerto Rico. Keep the sunscreen on. <laughs> All right, well, thank you all, and uh, look for, um, I'm going to send a link out in the next, uh, probably sometime today, once I get it back from Zoom, a uh, link to this webinar that you can actually go and look at the actual webinar. So, and then uh, if you can look up anything that you want to regarding the presentation. All right, thank you, everybody. Thanks, see ya, bye. Bye-bye.